let's recap what we were discussing. We have just discussed that there is a bacteria which was expressing antigens and immune system has made specific antibodies against these antigens. If these ant antibodies belong to the group of class of IgG or IgM, once the antibody bind with the antigen, FC portion of the antibody is activated. Which activate which protein? Complement number 1. Complement number 1, once it is activated, it hydrolytically break down complement number 4 and 2. Complement number 4 break down into A and B component. In the same way, complement number 2, C2 protein also break down component A and B. B component remains bound with the whole chain. But A components go away. A for away, A for apple, apple the last, right? Then what we discussed that 4B and 2B up to this, right, they are as C3 converters, they will activate the C3 protein or C3 complement and again A component of C3 is broken away and B component remain bound. Then what we discussed C4B, 2B and C3B together, all of them make C what they make? C5 convertase. C5 convertase has the power to break down C5 and convert into active form into B and A and B. A diffuses away and C5B remains bound and up to this, these were early events. Late events are C5B, you know C5B is part of late event up to this point is early. C5B will complex with C6, C7 and then 8 and 9 and all these five proteins, they make a pentameric hole, perforating pore. And this pore will be planted into bacterial membranes as membrane attack complex and destroy the bacteria. Right? Now, this pathway of activating the complement system is called classical pathway. It is a classical pathway of activating the complement. Right? One way to remember, you know General Motors company? GM. Yeah. GM. They make classical cars. Right? So we can say, everyone remember, GM makes? Classic. Makes? Yes? Classic car. Or you can simply say that IgG and IgM, IgG and IgM activate classical pathway. Is that clear? So this was one way to activate the complement system. Right? But for this pathway you need antibodies. If you do not have antibodies, you cannot activate the complement system through this pathway. Can you? You cannot. But when bacteria comes to your body, it takes about two weeks to make enough antibodies to activate the complements and activate the classical pathway and to kill the bacteria. So can it be a first line of defense against bacteria? No. Because when bacteria first time enter into your body, do you have already antibodies? No. no. And it takes one, two weeks to produce antibodies. And if you really want to attack on the bacteria with the complements, as soon as bacteria come in your body, can you depend on antibodies? No. So there must be some other pathways to activate the complement system in which antibodies are not involved. And of course, they are not classical pathways. Let me tell you some other ways in which as soon as bacteria enters in our body, complements start coming in touch with the surface of the bacteria and start getting activated. Is that right? What is that pathway? Let me show you another pathway of activation of complements. In that pathway, there are some cer certain surface molecules on virus envelope or some surface molecules on fungal cell wall or there are some surface molecules on bacterial surface. They can activate the complements. Complements can be directly activated when they come in touch with virus envelope, viral envelopes or fungal cell walls or bacterial surface molecules. Let's take example of bacteria. This bacteria has just entered into your body and it has entered 
first time when it has entered first time do you think you have the antibodies against it no but it may have some certain surface feature for example gram negative bacteria have a special type of protein on their surface right rather not protein rather a special lipopolysaccharide complex which is called endotoxins endotoxins are special surface molecules present on the surface of gram negative bacteria usually they are absent on the surface of gram positive bacteria and endotoxins are structurally a complex of lipid and carbohydrate that is why endotoxins are endotoxins endotoxins are called lipopolysaccharide lipids with multiple saccharides let's suppose that this is endotoxin or some other surface molecule now these lipopolysaccharides or endotoxin molecules are present on the surface of which uh, bacteria gram positive or gram negative gram negative especially in the same way there is some molecules similar to this not exactly are present on fungus or viral envelope they are not lipopolysaccharide but they can work like lipopolysaccharide to activate the complement what really happens as soon as this bacteria enters in our body and start damaging the tissue and inflammatory response start around it blood vessels start dilating and endothelial cells shrink and complements will come out right when complements will come and touch it now something very important that complement number 3 will directly touch it and become active look at it this is complement number 3 and of course as soon as it become active it loses the which component c3a later on i will tell you the functions of a components later on right and what is this now c3b so we can say there are certain surface molecules or virus envelope or fungal cell membranes or bacterial surfaces there are some molecules on which as soon as c3 touches it it break down into a and b components am i clear so what has become active c3 b now again once c3 b is activated by the surface molecule right it will make a domain which will react with another protein and that protein the second protein it has also lost the apple this protein is called its name is b name so protein b again thank god maybe they could call this waldemar protein or some difficult name thank god they just call it b protein of course not baby b protein and b protein when it touch the c3b it also break down into b a and b b it's difficult to understand so on the surface of the bacteria there are certain molecules which activate c3b c3b activate b protein and break down into c uh, break down into bb and ba component a goes away now what is this complex called c3b bb what is the name of this complex these two things together c3 b b b these together can activate one more c3b this is acting as c3 c3 convertase these two together are acting as c3 convertase is that right and these c3 convertase molecule right which is c3 b bb right this will bind one more c3 and that c3 will again lose an apple what is the c3a and what will be left behind c3b now these together these two together were called c3 convertase but now these one more c3b together all of this is called 